Good afternoon, subscribers. It's March 12, 2017, and it's a sunny Sunday here in Sydney, Australia. And before I begin, a welcome to episode 3 of Confessions of a Complex Human. Before I begin, I just would like to acknowledge Adam Smith, who wrote The Wealth of Nations, and uh, the, among other things, The Theory of Moral Sentiments. Uh, whose work we're still trying to understand a, a, a few hundred years later. Thank you, Adam Smith. So yesterday, I just want to complete the throw of what I was discussing yesterday. So we, in terms of digital identities, we have on one hand real identity that is tied to our social media profile, for example, Facebook, LinkedIn. On the other hand, we have anonymous forums like 4chan and 8chan and Reddit where you could use, you could use handles, you could use, uh, you can be anonymous, so it's not linked to your real identity. So each of these two things have their own particular qualities and the qualities um, of discussion is affected by either being linked to the real you or being anonymous. What we don't really have yet is somewhere in the middle which we call strong pseudonymity in the sense that the way I would define it is that there's still an identity that is, you can still point at an identity but it's not linked to me. For example, I can create three identities and those three identities can accumulate their own reputation. So they, I could be posting different things, I could be participating in different things using those three identities and I could play with them like this identity could be conservative, this could be liberal and this could be in the middle and they would have their own life. So I could be free to play but at the same time, because there's still reputation linked to those identities, it doesn't go into the chaos that sometimes happens when it's fully anonymous, when people just lash at each other because they know no one's going to know who I am, so I'm just going to be rude, I'm going to be as bad as I could be. Whereas with pseudonymity, if you do that, then the identities of the, of the things I create would be affected, right? I'm sorry, the reputation of the pseudonymous identities that I create would be affected and sure you could create another one but then again it takes for reputation to build up so if you build a net a social network like this then it should be something that allows people to build up reputation of their pseudonymous identities so that it would really be hard for people to let's say copy a pseudonymous identity or or because of the length of time involved to create to enrich the pseudonymous identities it would still have value so the analog this is analogous to the blockchain which is behind bitcoin so really the blockchain to put it simply it's a public ledger so it's like a ledger of this bitcoin address um, gave this amount of bitcoins to this other bitcoin address and then this because um, new, new bitcoins are issued when computers solve cryptographic, cryptographic um, puzzles and then they're awarded bitcoins and that's also reflected in the ledger. This is just simplifying it a lot. So it's public. Anyone can just look at the ledger and inspect it. But it's pseudonymous because although you know the bitcoin addresses you don't know who those addresses belong to unless of course they publish their they link their bitcoin address to them so otherwise it's just a, a, it, when you look at the actual bitcoin addresses it's just a long string of numbers in hexadecimal it's like a hash of, we talked about hash in our previous episode and maybe we could de devote an episode just talking about this thing or maybe I will do it in my other podcast where I could talk with an expert on this if I find one 
So, so that I just want to complete that for about digital identity. Now I want to move on to a more um, less to think and just all about these abstract ideas. I just want to talk more about Philly so, and share about them. So last night I went to this, I had a fantastic experience, really, really took me to the edge of pleasure and surprise. And I hit a point where um, I would term it, I peaked, you know, a peak of the sensation. So it will only be down, it can only go down from there because it's already the peak. It's a very definition of peak. But the night, the schedule for the night was still going on. But I felt, ah, this is good. And I heard that faint whisper that, well, you should go now. You've had your, your full with us. But then I ignored that whisper and I just, I still stayed in the event I attended. And so I was trying to pull more where I already peeped. And what happened was I had a not so nice experience because I it's, maybe I wasn't resonating well because I'm already full. And instead of acknowledging that, I tried to keep pulling more. And instead of being really such a perfect night, there's this dissonant chord. It's like it's like having this perfect symphony and then right at the end, right at the end, there's this, there's this uh, instrument that was out of tune. So that, that's what it felt like. So I, I've done courses in this and, and I'm aware of the principle of uh, peaking and if you peaked or if being full and then you stop when or do that do another thing so when things start having stop feeling good then do another thing so it's it's just like that's why desire is a good compass if if you just keep on keep on doing what feels right when you are in your right when i am in my rightness if i just feel the next good thing then if i do that religiously then all my life will be a good thing the right thing because i'm just doing it one step at a time one step at a time and i'm feeling it at each moment and this links back to complexity in a complex system you can't no one can know the whole thing because each of the agents each of the autonomous agents are continually reacting with each other so even if you know this agent would do that, but you don't know what that agent would do when that agent does this, that, that. It's always, it's dynamic. It's, um, you know, if you studied economics, they always say, ceteris paribus, all other things being equal but or constant, all other things being held constant. Well, that never happens in the real world because the real world is complex. Things are changing right now as i'm doing this so everything's moving at the same time so this is not if only we had the power to go stop everything stop and then i'll just play that bit so i can analyze that bit so i'll stop the whole world and then i'm just gonna study the the price movements of papayas or something and i'm just gonna watch what happens to papayas ignoring all the other products that people buy ignoring all their needs and wants and it's a, it can be a good tool for um, for uh, analyzing, but as we say, the map is it, it's a map. So the map is not the territory. The model is a model. All models are wrong. They're models. They're not the real thing. So so with that concept of when you've had enough, then you just stop. And, or when I've had enough, I should have listened to the voice that said, okay, it's good, you should leave now, it's done. But I kept pulling for more. The more I think about it, is the more it, this transcends my own per experience. That's looking at the world in terms of economics and politics. And I'm seeing that a lot of, a lot of things that's going wrong with the world is that people or corporations or governments are so 
much into this mentality of maximizing stuff, of efficiency, of getting more, you know, it's, it, even though it's already good, they just, they, they have to create artificial, even though the world is in abundance, they have to create artificial scarcity, because they want to, it's like an addiction to this zero-sum game, they just, they don't, they just want to keep on extracting, ex extracting, you know, so it's just like, it's time to maybe, Think you know is 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 un it's a bit complex because evolution is evolution and I I, I, firm, I fully believe that evolution goes along and you can't stop it. It's a never-ending process until the universe ends or whatever. And at the same time, there's this aspect of like how much more. How much more minerals can you get from the earth? How much more oil can you get? How much more trees can you cut? So instead of trying to just keep on squeezing, maybe it's time to look at it as a circle, you know. Like I said, like like in my personal experience, so I've reached the top of the circle, then it's time to come down, then go up again, come down again. Instead of Instead of just one, it's like up, 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 and then, and then just crash, and then the whole thing's gone. It's better to just be like in a circle. So it goes up, and then it reaches the top, and then it goes down, and then it goes up again. It is, it's replenishing itself, which, by the way, is how how most things in life are. So when when we when we were kids, we we studied the water cycle, right? So the water in the oceans, in the rivers, they evaporate, they evaporate, and then they become water vapor. They form clouds, and then clouds rub. There are like um, particles in the clouds, dust part. Yeah, which is by the way why I just remember this that um, the science of weather is called meteorology. And why is it called meteorology? It's because it's like a in homage to the meteors. And then what does meteors have to do with the weather? Well, apparently when meteors enter the atmosphere and then they just burn up in the atmosphere, they release this dust. They turn into dust, basically. And it is this dust particles in the air where water vapor condenses, form cloud, where water vapor form clouds because of the dust particles in the air. Which is also, by the way, why what gives us this beautiful orange sunset is the way the dust particles scatter the sunlight in the horizon. So anyway, so it's called meteorology because it, the importance of these dust particles from the meteor. So back to the water cycle. So clouds are water vapor in the air, and then once they get heavy enough, they form into rain, and then the rain comes down comes down into bodies of water and earth and then they evaporate again. So that's how nature does it. It's like even like biological stuff like like when I die my body will rot and then it will be used up again by the earth. Which is different from from the way traditionally and I hope it, it will change the traditional model of linear linear industrial production where I'm a company making let's say iPhones so I mine all this stuff to make all the parts of the iPhone I make the iPhone I package it and people buy it they use it and then they've used it and then it's broken or something and then they just throw it away or whatever so it, it doesn't go in circles it's, it becomes junk it pollutes the environment so there's this new wave of this new wave. It's not new, but I hope it becomes more entrenched or it replaces the older model of thinking, this linear model. And by the way, in the linear model, there's also a lot of externalities. So in economics, externalities are all the things you ignore because they're not relevant to the model you're analyzing. So let's say pollution can be an externality to the company. Once they've done their production, they don't care. 
it's someone else's job to clean it up. So that's the bell where where I'm gonna wrap it up now and I will continue tomorrow. So just to to wrap it up, it's time for us, in my opinion, it's time for us to think circularly that rather than linearly because our survival as a human species might de depend on it. So that was episode three of Confessions of a Complex Human. If you like what you've heard, please share this to your network. If you have reactions, if you have suggestions, if you have feedback, please comment below. And also, if you want to be the first to know future episodes, please go to YouTube. If, you're in another, if you find this in another social media, just click on the YouTube logo and it will take you to YouTube itself. And within YouTube, you can click on the subscribe button below so that when you subscribe, you will know when I come up with the episodes. So thank you for uh, watching this and see you tomorrow.